Are you looking for a system that gives you data about Canadian consumers, their demographic makeup, their shopping habits, and other types of psychographics? I have just the system for you. It's called Vividata's Dapracy Crosstab Report System, and I want to show you how to use it. Now, this isn't on the free web, so you can't get to it from Google. You have to use the link from the Concordia Library because we pay the bill, but you can use it as much as you want while you're at, you're at the university or you're using it from home as, your, as a student. So what you want to do is you want to go to the library website, click on, click on Vividata, and I will show you how to generate custom data tables. Now, what happens with Vividata? Vividata is a system uh, that provides access to the survey. The, the goal of the survey is to determine what are the shopping habits of Canadians so that advertisers can pick the right venue to promote their products and services. So for example, you know, if you're, you know, if you're Purina and you want to promote the brand of, uh, you know, your, your brand of dog food, then you want to make sure that dog owners are watching specific TV shows or specific times of the day, or they're consuming certain types of media so that you could target them, right? That's the goal of the survey. So not only do you need to know what are your media consumption habits, but you also need to know, you know, do you own a dog and all these other information, what educational level do you have? And do you, and so this is a long survey. It's like, you know, like 25 pages long and and multiple choice, and then all of this data gets corralled, gets gets loaded into the Dapracy system, and then you could create your own custom tables on it. You could pick the variables that you want to report on, mix them, and create a cross tab report. So with rows and columns. And so this is the goal of the system. And so the first thing that you want to do when the system loads, like you have here, you want to look at the different variables that are available. Look here in this kind of gray section of the website on the left. Uh, these are all the variables. Now, notice how there's a little triangle here. And so this will give you uh, subcategories. And honestly, I think it's worth it for you to browse through these categories and get a sense of what's available because that's the only way you would know how deep the system, how deep this data can go for you, right? So you really need to browse through and, and, and make an effort to literally like figure out what's going on. Yes, you could do keyword searches, uh, but you need to hit on the right label, on the right name that is on the data variable. So there, the only way to make sure you're not missing out is to really like go through it systematically, like comb through it. I know this is this is not necessarily the most efficient way, but hey, you know, uh, maybe I'm uh, compulsive. I mean, thorough depends who you ask. So the point here is let's. Uh, assume I'll give you an example. So you have here, you know, the different media consumption on top, and then it gets into the the things people buy. So like personal and household products, like personal products like hair care and clothing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, automotive, cars, business, finance, like people like credit card bills, that kind of stuff. Uh, home improvements, real estate. Uh, uh, actually, oh, shopping and apparel is here. So, so apparel is clothing. Um, my favorite one is personal characteristics and views, what people believe in. And so please take a, t take a few moments to just go through this different list and, and look at the, the different kinds of data variables that are available. And then you'll get a sense of how powerful the system is. Let me illustrate. Let's assume I'm interested, I love pets, I don't have a pet because I live in an apartment, but I would love to like engage with people with pets. And maybe there's a way to create an app, maybe like a cell phone app where you could like co-share people's pets or offer to walk pets I don't know I mean hey I'm not quite at the I'm still at the concept level but I really want to dig into this idea of, of of engaging people who have pets or want pets through a cell phone app so what I want to generate as an example table is uh, pet ownership uh, and cell phone ownership. I want to compare those two to get a sense of what's going on. Partly because I want to see, you know, maybe there's a thing about like if you're a cat owner, maybe you have a preference for a certain type of cell phone. I'm just curious, right? So let me just illustrate that. Uh, and so let's go here under personal and household products. That's where all the pet categories are filed uh, because technically pets are. Um, consumer goods in, in, in this system, I suppose. So I have here like face and body wash, moisturizers, pain relievers. I'm just reading through some of the items that are. And I, I want to illustrate that sometimes you really have to go to the bottom of a category ah, to get to the pets. Here we go. So what do I have here? Let's go up a little bit. There we go. Pet ownership, uh, number of cats in the household, number of dogs in the household. So this will literally tell me like one, two, three, four cats, one, two, three, four dogs and then I can add columns. So this is how the system works. 
you have to decide, see, notice how when I hover over the category I want, I get this little table on the side, right? And I have to decide, do I want to add it as a question or as a split? Basically, a question would add it as a row, or a split, it would be a column. Right? So it just depends on how I want to present the data. There's no right or wrong answer. You just have to pick. Right? You just have to say, oh, what makes more sense for me? I want it to see to look this way. Or sometimes there's a lot of, you know, a lot of categories. You want them on as, as rows because that will make the, the table narrower. I mean, there's a bunch of reasons why you would want to do that. But uh, for, for, for the purposes of this example, I'm just going to add them as a question. Right? So when I click on add as a question, it gets added here on my makeshift table. If you've ever done pivot tables in Excel or, or your favorite spreadsheet program, uh, this is exactly the same kind of idea. If you don't know what those are, you could you know look at some YouTube videos. Apparently, some people are good at explaining things on uh, YouTube. Yeah. Anyways, so uh, pivot tables in uh, your favorite spreadsheet program. And uh, let's also add number of dogs in the household. So I'm going to add that as a question. And I have here the different uh, variables that I'm interested in. So these are my pet ownership variables. Now I want to add columns. I want to split it by the types of cell phone. So what I need to do is go back on top of my categories. And I want to look at, let's say, digital devices, mobile phones. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to digital devices, mobile phones, look at those different categories. And I think this is the one I want, the mobile phone brands people have. Now, in this case, I'm going to add it as a split. And notice when I click, it gets added here. Right, so I have here the, the the pet ownership variables, and I have here the mobile phone uh, ownership variables. Let's browse back up to the top, and notice that if I execute this, I would get a table with 408 cells. That's the combination, the different combinatronics of of all these different uh, data points. Uh, but before I click on here, and you could just click on it and use it and, ex and export and be good. Uh, but I just want to show you that you could also filter. A good way to filter is to say, oh, let's say for example, I want uh, I want to I want to advertise in a specific magazine, and I want to see like I want to only look at the demographics for that specific magazine for my advertising. Or for example, I want to have a specific demographic makeup. So for example, a specific region of the country or, you know, whatever market uh, or generation, you know, for example. Uh, so let's say we want to do uh, the elderly population. So I could go and say view answers and look at uh, the different possibilities. So, okay, I could pick only these three variables. I'm like, ah, that's not so good. Um, you get the idea. So I could just say, okay, let's do province. That's an easy one. So I'm going to view the answers. And then I could say Quebec. So I'm going to write Quebec and then hit execute. And so now I still have the same number of cells. What I've done is I've changed the data in the background, right? And so once I've done my rows and columns like I like, like the, the way I like it, and then I have the filters that are appropriate, then I can generate cells, right? And here we go. So what do we have here? We have on the left, all respondents. That's the total database. But if we browse, then we have pet ownership, number of cats. So one, two, three, or more cats. Or pet ownership, one, two, three, or more dogs, right? And then on the top, I have, uh, actually, I have to be careful because it the browser button is here. And then I have the different mobile phone options, right? So this is really interesting. Oh, I don't think the system took my filter for the province. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. You get the point. I think I didn't click on the on the category the right way. Um, and so here is my data table. And of course, certain categories are so small that they put a red flag on them. Uh, and they, I think, try to highlight outliers. Uh, but the point here is you could use this data table uh, as evidence for your project. And not only do you get the actual count, so there are, for example, um, 53,200 people who have one cat in Canada and a Google phone, for example, right? Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, I mean, hey, again, there's a sea of data that you have to explore. And this system basically allows you to pick which variables that you want to uh, focus in. Now, a, a, a very interesting key feature of this is you could use it in conjunction with the census data tables. Uh, and uh, uh, there's a video about that, or there will soon be, uh, to determine 
uh, from the basis of the demographic makeup of this population, how many people there are in Canada with those demographics. So for example, let's say I want to dig more into the Google owners. I could go back to my rows and columns report, remove these pet ownerships and these mobile phone ownership, add in all of the demographic data points that I can get, and then, own, and then put in filters for those who are cat, have one cat and a Google phone. So I could get the demographic makeup of that population by redoing my search, by adding in the demographic variables and zoning into those specific uh, points. Now, that may sound like a little bit complicated, but the point with the system is this is a this is a, you should have a conversation with the data. You should basically say, "Ah, oh, I wonder this," and then you put in, create a data table, look at it, and 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 reflect on on the hypotheses, on 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 the hunches that you have to make sure that you're on the right track. And then you want to go back and do another search, and then go dig deeper, or come out, or try something else. And it this is the kind of system that rarely has a one shot. Uh, answer all table. You literally have to do it once, twice, three times to try to figure out what's going on because um, it, it is so complicated. It's like it's like using a tiny little keyhole to view in a completely complex and beautiful data portrait. Um, but yeah, that's uh, Vivi Data for you, and it allows you to create your own custom data tables. Uh, based on a yearly Canadian survey. Oh, and by the way, uh, you could export this to uh, your favorite spreadsheet, Excel or otherwise, and create your own graphs and do all sorts of interesting calculations uh, once you're done. I mean, you could do it as often as you want, but uh, the idea is that you would you know, play with the data until you get a, a sense, uh, maybe generate a few data tables for the same project, and then you could also dig deeper into those data tables by using uh, the Canadian stat census from StatScan, Statistics Canada, or some other uh, data reporting tools that I will present in other videos. Enjoy Vividata. This is Olivier Charbonneau from Concordia University Library.